Welcome everybody to the Every Couple of Days show with me, your host, George Mukwena. We'd love the show to be brought to you by Ingomazi, but they don't reply to their emails and frankly, Douglas Dale is better. Our first story involves a 7,800% increase in the sale of white vans. And parents, relax, not those type of white vans, but the type worn in Squid Game. Vans announced that the sales of their flagship shoe have gone up astronomically since being featured on the Korean TV show. Someone else who's hoping for a similar increase in shoe sales is Drip founder Legao Sehwan, who is being sued by an early Drip investor who's asking for 34% of the company. If I told you that from a small initial investment of 50,000 Rand, you could make back more than half a million Rand, you'd probably think I'm a Forex guy and you'd be reading this on a badly photoshopped poster of me in front of my new Lamborghini that I got after two weeks of hard training. I can really show you how folks, seminar incoming. This is the deal that Legao signed and it guaranteed the investor 100 Rand off of the first 5,000 pairs of shoes sold. That's half a million rand. And since he didn't pay that back, the investor is exercising an option to take 34% of his company away from him. That's not a drip, that's, that's, that's a poor. Service delivery remains a huge problem in the country. And what better subject to discuss on the road to the elections than the potholes we use on the roads to, well, everywhere. Personally, I don't think it's such a big deal. I mean, how many potholes could there really be? We know that there are at least 48,000 potholes in and around Johannesburg. Sure, if you add the small and medium potholes to the number, of course it's going to look really big. Maybe the real question should be, how bad can these potholes really get? You'll be forgiven for thinking this is a dam or some riverbank, but no, it's been described as the mother of all potholes in Gauteng. It's in Everton West in the Val, and in fact, motorists have now had to snake through right next to the road. Come on, I mean, the drivers are afraid of those little puddles. A bit dramatic if you ask me. I bet you could drive through those without harming your car. We have this road like this. Okay, okay, you got me. Clearly, we need to get to the bottom of this problem. I mean, surely there are reasons that are oversimplified for the purposes of a PR trail. That was because uh, during the hard lockdown and the negative impact of COVID-19, it was not possible for the provincial government and the municipalities combined to focus on maintaining the road network. I knew it. Damn you, COVID. It only makes sense that a lockdown and a pandemic would equal delays and a backlog of fixing these things. Surely, if we check the reports of that pothole that happens to have road in it, you'd see that maybe it was fixed, I'd say, 2019? It was last fixed on the year 2011, on August. Oh my god. Okay, maybe it will help that recently the city of Joburg, Discovery and Dal Direct have come together to create the Pothole Patrol. A service where you can send a WhatsApp with a location pin and a picture and somebody will be there to check it out within two weeks. The funny thing is that the places where this is probably going to work are places that are going to be looked after in two weeks in any case. If you ask any of the community members that come from where that huge gaping hole in the ground is, they tell you that they've had 10 years of protesting, community meetings, and sending messages through councillors. The same councillors that promised them the moon and the stars, but end up leaving them with moon-sized craters in the middle of the road. EFF leader Julius Malema has come out in support of the Easy Nyoga Nyok, praising them for being able to give electricity to the rurals and townships, and succeeding where government failed. I mean, I agree, what these guys accomplish with a long nose plier, blue overalls and safety shoes. You know the guy. We all, we all know the guy. Government has failed to do with billions of rands of our taxes. And just look at your payslip. See how much government is taking out every single month. And compare it to the 50 rand and Zamalek Dumpy that you'd pay these guys to illegally connect you. But do the people who want electricity know exactly what they're signing up for? I mean, we were all sold the dream that load shedding would be from 4 o'clock to 7, like it is in the suburbs. But they're close in demographic to us, who play the load shedding lottery every single time ESCOM announces a stage. I mean, what's it going to be today? An hour? Two hours? Th three days? Who, who knows? 
In a bid to make the platform more tolerable, Twitter is testing out new solutions that could help make the app a safer space. One of the things they're trying out is a thing called soft blocking. Twitter's new soft block, it's a way for users to remove a follower without blocking them altogether. That user won't be notified that they've been soft blocked. It's another way Twitter is offering users more control while helping curb abuse and harassment. Finally, a way to ghost people without having to tweet at 3 a.m. from my burner account, which you'll never find. I've got like seven numbers after the name. They've also tested a feature that's supposed to give you a prompt when you're about to start discussing something that could end in a heated debate. Personally, I'm against this because what's Twitter if not a place where we go to act like we're going to speak cordially and end up just calling each other names? Take, for example, the d discussion that happened between Shimza and my man. Would we have known about potential government money being channeled through Shimza's restaurant? Or even that my money has a white wife? I mean, if you only know post DA my money, you'd probably think he kisses more black women than, ironically, Helen Zilla. Huh. Imagine if any of these conversations had ended because Twitter notified them that they're about to get into a discussion. 